Foundations of Math 27.2, Properties of Graphs of Quadratic Functions. We just took a look at 7.1. I did mention a couple things that we're going to learn here in 7.2, the properties of quadratic functions. So we know that a quadratic function is shaped like a parabola. It can either open up or down. This is opening down. Um, uh, we know that there is a maximum point for a parabola that opens down, and there's a minimum point for a parabola that opens up. And that maximum minimum point will be at something called the vertex. So if you don't have this uh, in your notes, you should write this down in your notes, what a vertex is, okay? It is the, either the maximum point on a parabola that opens downward, or it's the minimum point on the parabola that opens upward. So I'll just give you half a second to, you can sketch a parabola and label it on a diagram. You can write this down word for word or write it in your own words, okay? Vertex. All right, so what does the vertex tell us in a quadratic function? Um, this graph right here, if we just uh, kind of go back, this graph right here, this is a girl who's playing volleyball, and after this bump, okay, time is recorded here, it looks like, and the height of the volleyball has been measured. When we graph that, it looks something like this. It looks like a parabola. So a parabola is very handy for um, representing, um, you know, height of object over time, like this. So if we threw a rock out the window, um, the shape of the graph, if we graph the height over time, would look like a parabola, at least part of a parabola. If you threw a ball up into the air, or you bumped that ball up into the air there, like she did, the, the shape, uh, the trajectory, would, would go up like this, and it would start to slow down as it gets up to the top, right? And so that's where we kind of have this uh, over time. It kind of the, the height does not increase very much until it gets to the very top, and for a split second, for an instant, it is stationary. Okay, it's, it, it gets to the very top, and then it stops there for just a fraction of an instant, and then it starts to come down. So slowly, it starts to come down, and it picks up speed, and so it decreases in height uh, a larger amount over the same amount of time. Then you get this parabola shape. Okay. So the vertex will be the maximum point. So when we're talking about, you know, real life situations, um, if you guys, what is this, Foundations 20, if you guys end up taking pre-calculus um, 30 and calculus, we do lots of uh, optimization problems, which we just did last chapter, but we use uh, calculus to find this vertex, and we call it a maximum point in this. And the maximum point maximizes the, uh, the kind of the, the y value there. And so we can let any kind of situation represent some sort of function. We can find out where these little maximum points are, and that's the vertex of a parabola. Okay. So how do you find the vertex? Well, the vertex is the maximum point, but in this little graph here, what they're showing you is the symmetrical nature of the parabola. So there is a vertical line that passes through the <coughs> vertex. It's called the axis of symmetry. And so here's the second thing that you might want to take down as far as your notes goes. Axis of symmetry. It is a line. Now, you should put in here a vertical line. Okay. It's a vertical line that separates the parabola into two identical parts. It's like, a, it's like the mirror, you know? Okay. And the axis of symmetry always passes through the vertex of the parabola. Okay, so it's a vertical line, separates the parabola into two, two halves, and it passes through, always passes through the vertex. And so if you know two points on the parabola that are on the same horizontal line, you can just find the average of those two points, or the, the midpoint of those, this line here, connecting those two, and that's where your axis of symmetry will be. So for example, what's this one? This is 2 and 1.25. So half of, or sorry, 0 and 1.25 looks like. And so half of that would be your axis of symmetry. Okay? Right here. So it's about 0.625. Yeah, 0.625. Okay? Questions? Vertex, axis of symmetry. All right, so again, when we talk about a maximum or minimum value, we're talking about the actual y value of the vertex. 
Okay? So let's just write that down in our books. Okay, a little sketch here. Parabola. Notice that a parabola is not a U shape. It's not like this where this line is vertical. This line is not vertical at any point. Okay? It's not straight up and down at any point. It's always on a bit of a bit of a slant. Okay? And it's always sort of pulling away as it's going down. Okay? That's important. It's not a U shape. So a lot of kids are just draw a U, but the parabola is different. What was I going to say here? Okay, I literally don't know. What, oh yeah, maximum value. Okay. In this case, we have a maximum value of this parabola, and the maximum value is the y value that is associated with the vertex. Okay, it's the y value. So x y of the vertex right here, it's the y value. That's the maximum. And of course, it's the same for a parabola that opens upwards. This y value is the minimum. It's always y value. Any questions so far? I know I'm kind of going through this quick, um, but I think, uh, have you guys heard a lot of this stuff before? <coughs> no? Yes? No? Oh, half of you have, because half of you have taken pre-cal 20. Okay, so some of you, it does, because they're two different paths, it doesn't matter when you take them. It doesn't matter if you take pre-cal 20 first or foundation 20 first, it doesn't matter. There are two, there are two different paths, foundation 20 and pre-cal 20, but we can talk about that another time. Yeah, and we might go, we might do that, we might switch the way we do it as well, but it's, you know, you get the same thing. All right. So, let's take a look at, in summary, okay, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's pay attention here, just another minute here. So, in summary, a parabola that's defined by the equation right here, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, that's the general, for, or standard form, I guess, and it opens downward if a is negative, that's less than zero and opens upward if A is greater than zero. If it opens downward, the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex in either case. If it opens upward, it has a minimum. If it opens downward, it has a maximum. We haven't talked about domain and range, but domain is always the X values, right? All possible values of X. And for parabolas, there is no restriction. There are no restrictions on the x values. So the domain is a set of all real numbers. The range, though, the y values, are restricted. So take a look at this. What's the range on this parabola if each of these lines is 1? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What's the range for this parabola? Not all real numbers. No, the, the range? Above or 2, including. or including 2. Okay, so the range for this one, the range is y is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so if it opens upwards, the range is above the y value of the vertex and including. This one, if this was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the range for this parabola would be y less than or equal to 5. Make sense? And x values can be anything, because remember, this goes down, but it also goes to the right forever and to the left forever. So it can be any x value.